All right, we are recording. Audio perfect. All right, Jace, cool. thank you so much for agreeing to being here. It is a little bit odd, eh? It is weird, but it's cool. So There's you were so just saying. things looking at me right yeah. now. <laughs> you, the camera. <laughs> camera over there, camera over here. <laughs> um, so you were saying that a while back, you were not the kind of person that would sit in front of a camera, let yeah. alone speak in public. Yeah. What has changed? Or, or when did that start? Well, well, I did the ambassador program. So a lot of people I think know I'm really involved in pageant. I love doing my ambassador program. We learn a lot about public speaking skills and being out in front of the community. And you have a sponsor who represents you and all of these things that get you a little bit closer to people and interacting with people and yeah. little tiny jobs like that you get to do all out in the community. And I fell in love with that. And it was totally took me from this like quiet little shy like lighthouse girl <laughs> to actually being able to have a conversation and talk and do this and not really feel not really hide behind like all of these different like oh I just have to be bubbly all the time and friendly yeah. and Jace it was like oh I can actually kind of be out there and outgoing and yeah. be myself and yeah. it took a long time to get there and of course a little bit my weight too because at that point I was probably around my heaviest or almost my heaviest so, so let's let's talk about that to give people a little bit of perspective because yeah. there's obviously the the DP family that knows you very well but then yeah. there's a lot of people that are gonna watch this that don't know yeah, much about you so, so cool. <laughs> tell me tell me a little bit about about you like how old you are and yep. all that. so I'm 25 um, and when I was 12 by the time I was 12 I was over 200 pounds so that was pretty challenging so I was about gosh not even five feet tall and 200 pounds so that by the was, time you were 12 yes so I was a pretty big child <laughs> in general yeah. and that was really tough because I did so many crash diets by the time I was probably like 13 or 14. Um, like I remember Brennan and I doing the Atkins diet. I did Weight Watchers. Um, every shake, imagine, like all of those little things that I was like, I have to lose weight now, right now, like no long-term goals, just short-term, this is what I have to do to make myself better. And then that probably went on for a long time. And then finally, when Bryn and I moved into my older sister, which a lot of people know Bryn, of course. Um, but when Bryn and I moved in together, we started to look at, okay, none of these things have worked ever. You know, we were really happy, but we just weren't really happy with where our health goals were at at that time. Mm -hmm. I'd say I've always been a very happy person. Like, if anyone knows me, super bubbly, out there, outgoing. But I wasn't happy with, like, what I was doing for myself. I was happy with what I was doing for other people, but that was really hindered by, I didn't really care about my health. I wasn't really doing anything for me, yeah. ever. So when Brynn and I moved in together, we kind of discussed like, okay, we need to make a change. Just do something where we're gonna stick to it. And that was, we started just eating healthier. And then maybe about a year, six months later, we joined Driven, and which is pretty crazy. Before you joined Driven, were yeah. you working out already? No. So I tried, oh God, I don't know how many gyms. Like I've done curves. I tried to do, um, where did I go? Just like, you know, circuit trainings, just a regular gym with machines. And I remember I went and I got a, like a consultation or whatever and they tell you and they're like, you're morbidly obese. Like you, you need to do all of this work. I'm like, um, and it was so overwhelming because I didn't even know what a treadmill was. Like I right. literally, I was like, I don't even know how to turn on these machines. I don't know what a chest press is. Yeah. Like, I had no clue. And people who were, like, in their tiny little Lululemon outfits being like, you need to do this. I'm like, I don't know how to do any of that. Yeah. So I tried to go to gyms, and I just never enjoyed it at all because I had no idea what to do. And then you mentioned that Bryn was the one that told you. Because Bryn yeah. actually had a, like, she trained at Driven at the very beginning, totally. like 2013, yep. um, and then she left. So she was the one that told you, hey, let's check yeah. this. Yeah, she, I think, talked to Fab one day because Brandon, of course, does so many people's hair from here. And she talked to Fab one day and Fab was like, hey, you guys should come check it out. I'll give you a week free. And Brandon came home and I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> Actually, I probably said a lot worse words than that. <laughs> but I was like, I'm not doing that. And she's like, 
yes, you are. I was like, no. Like, and I don't really say no yeah. very often. I'm really what was like, going through, like, do you think that it was some, it was based on, on just fear? Totally. Yeah. Oh. A lot of fear and like really changing my body physically. Like I think for me, it was always this mental game of, oh, I can control my food. But now all of a sudden I was like, ooh, I need to like reach out and actually do different things to my body. That was like, that was scary to me, like trying to be more physically fit. And I remember always saying like, oh, I'm not an athlete. Like I'm not, I can't do these things. And I was like, Jace, like pull your shit together here. <laughs> like, yeah. Yes, you are. Like you can do this stuff. Like you can reach those goals, but it took me a long time to get there. Like I remember Britt and I, the first two weeks at Driven, we like threw up every day after class. I fainted one day in the shower. Like oh my I was goodness. thought I was going to die. Like there was a point where I just wanted to be like, no, can't do this. I can't. So, I mean, especially with, with such a difficult start. Yeah. What got you through it? What got you through those first few weeks? Um, one big thing, and I, I don't know if you said it to me, Miguel, or, but I remember in one class you said you could, or somebody said you can do anything for 10 seconds. And that's pretty much been my quote that I've gotten through every single class ever, like to this morning when I did 6 a.m. legs with Brian. And I was like, oh, Brian, like I just yeah. don't want to do this yeah. anymore. And then I was like, yes, James, yes, you do want to do this. Yes. Like every step of this little lifestyle change is important and you can do anything for 10 seconds yeah and then you just say that to 10 yourself. seconds at a time 10 seconds at a time so tell me a little bit about your jobs and everything that you have going on okay yeah so because <laughs> that that's like let's paint the whole picture yeah so i guess i'll start with like how i start my day so i come to the gym mostly 6 a.m classes um so i go to the gym from six till seven i run run home like go into the shower or get ready as fast as i possibly can um, meal prep for the day, wake up James sporadically because I'm so stressed out that I need him to help me meal prep for the day yeah. um, just to get things done. I work usually from 9 till 4.30 at Lens Crafters and then I go right to Longwood after that and work 5 till midnight depending on what my shift is. So pretty much my day starts at 5 in the morning and doesn't end till about 12.30 in the morning, I guess. Yeah, so... And then by the time I get home, I don't usually go to bed till like one or two. So that is a pretty crazy day. Yeah. And then top it all off, all the volunteer things that I love to do. So I do my ambassador program, which I've been doing for, oh my gosh, nine years now, which is really cool. And it's so great. That is one of the most rewarding things that I do. Um, just to watch all these young women grow and prosper from every single speech class, every single thing we do in the community it doesn't matter like they are blooming from yeah. every moment that we spend together so I never want to give that up right. that's like probably my number one right. priority and which is good and I kind of have to prioritize certain things and like gym num like would definitely say it's up there number yeah. one too if I can't make it to the gym some days I'm like eh, it's okay yeah. I work really really hard yeah. like if there's one day where I'm like I can't do it. Like you I do just, take a break. I take yeah. a break, and and that's okay because yeah. my body gets to the point because I don't sleep very much. Like I probably sleep three hours a night on average, um, or that's what Fitbit tells me anyway. Yeah. So which is which sucks sometimes, yeah, but holy. yeah, it's it's tough. So that's kind of the average work day, um, and then when I don't work at the evenings at Longwood, I'm usually doing something for ambassadors. Um, I have meetings for the amazing race stuff. Yeah. Um, I do the Kris Kringle craft market every year. So I'm a princess for that. Yeah. Slash somewhat of a coordinator for the program too. So it keeps me really, really busy. Now, what draw... I mean, because you could drop many of these things. Yeah. But you choose not to. And I, I, I honestly believe, just like I... Just like I told you that one day, whether it's 10 seconds at a time or whatever the decision is that's yeah. right in front of you that you need to take in order to move closer towards yeah. your goals, you either take that step or you don't. Yeah. It's fine. It's your call. But at the end of the day, you either reap the rewards or you deal with the consequences. Totally. What motivates you to do all of this? I feel awesome. Like, even though some days I cry a lot <laughs> yeah. and some days I'm exhausted and 
I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I don't want to get out of bed. I just want to lay here. Mm -hmm. And then I think, oh my gosh, I'm missing out on everything if I just lay here. And I've gotten to do so much cool stuff in my short 25 years because there's been a lot of stuff that's happened Mm -hmm. and I still feel like... You know, I don't really feel like I'm getting older. I feel like I'm getting younger all the yeah. time, which is a cool, that's a cool feeling because yeah. you just keep doing all these fun things and you make all these great memories. And I've met so many incredible people. Like, I could not ask for better opportunities or experiences with everything I've done. So I just can't give it up. I can't lose out on an awesome opportunity. Right. Like, it. I think that's what motivates me because each day I see myself like, oh, I've made a difference for this person or this person's made a difference in me and I don't want to stop that flow because it's so great. Yeah. However, there's obviously some things that you need to give up in order to... Yes. What would you say you have given up? Definitely time with loved ones, which is really challenging because I don't get to see my family a lot. I see Bryn every single day, which is I'm right. so lucky because Bryn's my best friend in the whole world. But it's really tough. Like, we don't really get to see, you know, my mom and my dad. And I don't really get a lot of time with my family. Like, my Oma messages me all the time saying, I would really love to see you. And that, like, that's what kind of makes me tear up because it's like, oh, I do want to see you. And why don't I have time for that? And I need to make time. So I try and do like what I have is I have like daily goals, weekly goals, and monthly goals. So quite often my monthly goal is to spend time with one of those family members who I don't get to see. Mm -hmm. So last month, like I spent that time with my dad who lives in Victoria. So that's a little bit challenging to not only get together because of, you know, time and, you know, location, but, um, or the other day I had two hours in between jobs. So I called my mom. She lives in Nanaimo, which is awesome. Mom, I have some time. What are you doing? Let's go get coffee right now. So those things get, but they kind of fall by the wayside too, because I'm so busy and I'm like, oh, I'm just so busy. I'll do that later. Or, oh, I'm, I have this going on. It's fine. Well, it's it's not really fine because if I miss out on all those like opportunities to see them too, then it's, it's really challenging because it's like, well, what if someone gets sick or what if you don't get to spend this time or, you know, your, your grandma or your grandpa who's a little bit older and you didn't get to have as much time with them as you would have liked. Like those are moments that I don't want to miss out on, but I do. And right now I'm like, okay, that's life. So I have to really try and prioritize when can I see those people? How often? Yeah. And I don't feel like it's enough. So. I don't think that you ever do, you know, yeah. you, you can like, I could never feel, okay, I've given my kids and Katie yeah. as much time as I need. Totally. We're done there. The, in fact, it's like the more, the more time I spent there is like, okay, well, the more it is expected. Yeah. So it, it is just, it is just part of life. And, yeah. and, uh, I think that it's very important that if you have goals, it's very important that that you don't let the, the the potential of missing out on on what the perfect picture looks like in your mind. Yes. In your mind, it yeah. may look like I have breakfast with my mom every day. <laughs> yeah. I talk with my grandma every afternoon, yeah. and you know, th- the reality is you probably wouldn't be able to do that unless you were unemployed. Yeah. And living at home and. Totally. You know, and that's not where you're going. So yeah, it, it's just part of part of life. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like I've, you know, I've had lots of time to do great things with all of those people, and I have so many memories. And you know, even my friends, like they're like, Jace, we never see you. We never get to see you." I'm like, "Well, I'm here, and I'm totally only a phone call away." Like, mm-hmm. so I will glad like if anyone phones me or anything like that. Even though sometimes I miss it, I'm like. I will get back to you. Like, I am only a phone call away. And I I think that's sometimes tough, too, because I've had a lot of friends who I've lost over the years because they're like, well, you're too busy. And I'm like, well, I'm definitely trying. Like, I definitely want to try, and I don't want to give this up. But also, if people aren't willing to be a part of your busy lifestyle, then sorry, you you get the cut. (laughs) I think I I 100% agree with the fact that when we are... I don't know, maybe at every point of our lives, Mm -hmm. I can only speak, you know, as far as 35, but I think that a lot of friendships 
are overrated. Yeah. And 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 it sounds politically incorrect. Oh, the what? No way. Every No, yeah. not every person in in our lives deserves your energy. Yeah. You know, and like for example, if they're busy and like if they want to connect with you just to know how you're doing, Yeah. Hey, I just miss you. I just wanted to chat and, you know, tell you that I miss you. Maybe maybe we need to book a coffee time <laughs> totally. for like two months down the road. Yeah. <laughs> But that's okay. I yeah. just miss you. I want you to know that I love you. And I'll, I hope to see you soon. Yeah. That's it. But if you're like, oh, you're not coming to party with us anymore. You're not, you know, you're not joining the, the whatever league. Like, yeah, yeah exactly. man, you have different priorities right now. Yeah, and Bryn and I actually have talked a lot about that, too. And I always say, like, there's friends for a reason, friends for a season, and friends for life. And, like, me and probably three of my girlfriends who I've just... I have had a part of my life forever. Like, I just... I can't really, like, remember a time without mm -hmm. them. And that's the thing. We're still friends. And yeah. we still connect. And we've all moved all over the place. Um, she's... One of my friends are moving to Vancouver in September, but... And we're so busy, but we just have no doubt in our mind that we'll still have that time to talk. Pick up the phone. Yeah. Just be like, hey, I miss you. How yeah. are you? I love you. Like, yeah. just wanted to let you know. And those are the friends for life. And then right. the friends for a season, it's like, oh, maybe I had this job. And we met and we clicked at that job. And then I moved on. And yeah. We didn't really have a lot in common anymore because we don't work there together. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. I still, I really enjoyed your company. It just, yeah. <laughs> doesn't mean I don't like you. Yeah. It just means that... Maybe as you move Our on... Our paths are just going totally. in different directions. And I think that's a lot with relationships too because so many people ask me, they're like, oh my gosh, how do you and James do it? Because he works like crazy too. We never really get to see each other. And I was like, we just make sure that every Tuesday night is date night. Every single Tuesday. And it's like, nothing can stop that. I don't let meetings get in the way of that. Yeah. Um, like, I remember, like we've had Amazing Race meetings on Tuesdays. I'm like, I'm really I can't sorry, make it. I can't yeah. make it. Like, Tuesday is yeah. James's night. And I think that really, like, holds it together because yeah. we have something to look forward to every yeah. week. It's like, oh, like, Tuesday night's totally. coming. And whether we go out for dinner, we make dinner together. I'm frazzled and it's crazy busy and James makes me dinner, which happens a lot. Nice. <laughs> Whatever the situation may be, like, we know that's our night together. Yeah. And we just usually don't hang out with other people on those nights. And, yeah. like... So as much as maybe once a week isn't a lot right now, I feel like in my life, that's pretty darn awesome that I yeah. can like carve that time out. That's right. So. Like in, I mean, it's all about, it's, it's very easy for people to, to give you their opinion on what your life should look like. Totally. And to that, I always say bullshit. Yeah. Like you may have whatever bar you decide to measure yourself up against. Yeah. But just because, like, if I am holding myself, mine, higher than yours and it makes you uncomfortable, yeah. I'm really sorry, but I'm not going to lower mine just so that you can be like, totally. there, okay, so now you're having a hard time. Now you're not making progress like I'm not making progress. Yeah. Now I feel like we can be friends and I feel better around you. Yeah. Like, that's not the... Uh, that's, that's not, not a, a friend. Good friend. That's not that's a good friend. <laughs> out. You're no. out. Totally. Yeah. And, like, Brynn and I were talking about having your top five. So, kind of, like, who your top five people are. Maybe who you keep in, like, your closest circle all the time. You can have more friends, of yeah. course, than that. But I just feel like that's really important because, like, those are the people I want to check in with, you know, a, a lot. And yeah. just... Be like, hey, how are you? Like, I know yeah. I've been crazy. And yeah. and that's the thing, too, is, like, I, I make a lot of, like, excuses for my busyness. And I shouldn't. And it's my life. And I'm allowed to do whatever I want. And that's okay. And, yeah. you know, I don't... I apologize all the time. And everyone knows that, I say. So I'll run into the wall and apologize to the wall. Because I'm just like, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't mean to do that. And everyone's like, you're crazy. What are you talking about? Yeah. And I think that's the thing. Like, if I have to start apologizing to someone all the time for being busy I'm like eh. yeah. like sorry I yeah this is my life and I really want us to be able to work together to fit it all in but if it doesn't if it doesn't work it doesn't work then that's okay and I just again there's so many things I love to do I'm passionate about so much and I'm so passionate about figuring out what other people are passionate about like that's pretty much what I want to do yeah. with the rest of my life yeah. so okay so tell me So far, how long have you been with Driven? 
So I've been just over a year. So we joined April 11th of 2016. That was my anniversary date. That was the date I had to post the big progress pictures. So nice. that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and your highest was 230. My highest what... here was 230, 235, okay. roughly. Um, overall, the heaviest I've weighed was 261. Okay. So I lost about 25 pounds just from just like walking and being a bit healthier and just making better choices yeah. for food. Um, also, there was a few breakups in there. So when that happens, you, I always yeah. lose weight. <laughs> and how much have you lost in total to date? So today I weighed in at 171. So I've lost 90 pounds since my heaviest. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. So I've lost 70, I think 70, I can't do math in my head right now. 70, 70 pounds some. Yeah. since DP, which is crazy. Wow. Yeah. And so tell me about your short term goals, like in the next three months. Yes. Yeah, so next three months. Um, hint, so, hint. A hint, hint. Um, with Tough Mudder coming October 28th, I have to get to my 100 pound mark by then. If I don't, Marjolaine and I both have to shave our heads. So if Marjolaine doesn't get there and or I don't get there, we both have to shave our heads. So both of you said <laughs> by Tough Mudder, yeah. I need to have lost 100 pounds in total. Yeah. And if either one of us doesn't, we're both shaving our heads. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So I have 10 pounds to go. <laughs> okay, so now this is this is a part of the fitness journey that can get a little bit scary. Yeah. As you are approaching the end of your weight loss goal. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you're like, I don't have a gram of fat to lose. Totally. It just means that you're like, all right. I as long as I somewhat maintain the course, yeah. things will keep going in that direction. Um, what goals do you see setting for yourself after? I think because the 100 pound mark, that was just such a big deal. Like that was so like that is just so cool to get to and be like, oh, my God, I did that. Like that's a, that's a whole human <laughs> off yes. me essentially. Like that was really, really crazy. So and still going with it is so motivating. And and then, yeah, all of a sudden you come to this lull and you're like, OK, well, what am I going to do? So I've actually, well, I was saying this to you the other day, but I have something that I really want to do. And starting with Tough Mudder, over 365 days, I'm going to do 100 days of fear. So these are all little things that I'm absolutely terrified of that I'm going to blog about and things that I've never thought I've been able to do. Um, maybe they're little fitness goals, like doing a chin-up. Yeah. Never been able to do that. Like, I'm so scared to just be like, okay, I'm going to do this by myself, like without the bands yeah. under my feet. Like there's just no way. Like I've never been able to even mentally get past that. Yeah. So that I think is like a really cool mental goal yeah. where I think will help me just contribute to the weight loss continuously yeah. and a healthy lifestyle yeah. change. Because I really, ideally, like my goal weight overall was about 140. So if I can get to the 160 mark, then... It's like, okay, now it's just another 20 pounds to lose. Yeah. I just lost 100. Like, yeah. that kind of makes me feel really good. Like, it's not like, oh, I need to have a rippling six-pack in six months. Right. Like, that is not a realistic goal at all. Right. And I don't really want it to be like that. Yeah. Like, I I liked that I've taken it off slowly. Like, it probably started about three and a half, four years ago where I started to shift from, oh, I'm going to drink every weekend and I'm going to eat a lot of chocolate cake and ice cream and I'm going to sit and binge watch Netflix and be like, I can just crush this whole tub of ice cream. No problem. Like, no problem. <laughs> like, did you even Do know not him? give up. Do Like, do not give up. Like, you've got this. Like, I just had to change. Like, it's a huge mental shift. And just being like, because I don't say no in general to people very yeah. well because I'm like, oh, no, I'm, I'm the yes man. Like, I can do that. Like, I don't mind taking this on. And it was the same with food. Yeah. I was like, yes, yes, I want to eat that. Give me more. Like, yeah. I'm going to eat that too. And it's just at that point where you have to be like, uh, no, it's okay. Like, it's not good for my body. And whether that be alcohol, drugs, food, like, I feel like that is such a hard thing to get over. And it wasn't easy. Like, that is the most challenging thing is is the food and saying no to that. Like, I can't eat that. Yeah. I can't eat it. Don't want that. No. Like, and that took a lot. That was really tough. Yeah. So Does it get easier? Yeah, and then and then you go off the track for a second, and like then it's everyone, like yeah. you're like, oh crap! Like this weekend, it was so funny. 
I was with the ambassador girls in Merritt, and they're like, you know, eating chips, and they're 17, and they are so active and fit, and they're like, we want chips and candy, and let's walk to McDonald's. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I just want a green smoothie or something. Give me some some grass. Protein or some chicken breast, and it was so funny. So I was trying so hard to just, like, stay on it, and I was like, no, I'm tracking. I'm doing so good. And then there was some chocolate-covered blueberries, and I ate the whole bag, and I was like, ugh. Damn it. But then I kind of felt good. I was like, no, I deserve that treat because I work really hard. So, but then the tough thing is, is to not treat yourself again and again. Every day. That's the hard part. So when I have a cheat day, I'm allowed to have, and I have a cheat day usually like once every two weeks. I try and like limit myself to that. So maybe on mine and James's date night, we'll go out and have dessert with our dinner and we'll split it. Like I don't get a dessert to myself or... You know, I'm like, I love ice cream, like obsessed with ice cream. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, it's that is my kryptonite. Like that will just take me down. Yeah. And um, so that's like I will save for two weeks, like that moment where I can enjoy ice cream. And I I don't wuss out. Like I'm gonna go get like the best the ice good cream stuff. I can yeah. get. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't wanna like No a low fat little... garbage. No, give like, me the hagen dash, give me Ben and Jerry's <laughs> with like extra Reese's peanut butter yeah, cups on yeah. top. <laughs> Nice. Like, it's like, oh, it's just one ice cream cone yeah. with, dipped in chocolate, smothered in sprinkles. <laughs> and now, so what does, and so that's a cheat day. What about on a normal day? What What's your eating like on a normal day? Yeah, so usually it's really tough because I work such long hours. And because Longwood is so active, I actually burn more calories in a shift at Longwood. Like, I probably double the amount of calories I burn than a workout here. Yeah. Mind you, I'm working for like seven hours running like yeah. up and down the stairs serving people I'm sweating like it's it's hard work so yeah. I would say like I want to stop eating like I eat 9 a.m to 9 p.m that is like my ideal like you gotta stop eating then because it's so tough because we don't really get breaks like you have to serve your tables yeah. you can't really be like oh just one second I'm gonna go eat I'm gonna actually I mean, I'm gonna, <laughs> like, you can't, yeah. can't really do that so I'll always have like ready snacks so protein bars just like tucked away in the back room so I can quickly eat even half of it just to keep myself going and just try to make like the healthiest snack choices that's my biggest challenge because if I don't have ready to made snacks what are your top three um probably hard-boiled eggs and I usually just eat the egg white I toss away the yolk because there's so much fat in the yolk um, because I also love avocados, so I try and get like my fat from you my choose. avocado. Yeah, so I choose like what what I really really want. I also always eat like the dry curd cottage cheese, okay. and then I'll put like a little balsamic vinegar and like tomatoes nice. in it, and oh, it's so good. And yeah. like it tastes kind of like a baccaccini salad with yeah. twenty billion times more protein in it, and like half the fat, well, yeah. even less, little calories, more than yeah. half the calories and fat. So. I always eat that, um, protein bars, and then I have, like, maybe a shake in the morning or egg whites, or I make protein pancakes a lot. Mm -hmm. That's, like, a big one in the morning for me because I'm pretty much bringing it in a container and eating it in the car as fast as I can. Yeah. And what can you have for dinner when you have so little time to prepare it? Yeah, that's hard. Like, thank goodness for James because he preps, like, food sometimes for me, like, for four days. Right. And he's a chef, which is awesome. So he knows, like, all the measurements and calories and, like, what is – and maybe to use half the oil in this because, like – and he's so great. for Like, I really couldn't meal prep without him. Yeah. Um, Other than that, I'm really thankful for Longwood because even though, like – Everyone's like, oh, you work in a restaurant. Isn't that hard? And it's like, well, no. Like, we have tons of healthy options on the menu. And the boys in the kitchen know. Like, they, yeah. <laughs> they, they, like I told them I had to shave my head. And they're like, oh, that's it. We're, like, injecting your salmon with butter now. Like, <gasps> we're going to, like, load oil on all your food. And I was like, no. Like, you nice. can't do that. So, but they're so good and, like, really supportive. And everyone knows my journey. Yeah. I just talk to everyone about it. I'm like, no. Like, I, I don't want to do that today. Yeah. And there's... Now, tell me something. So... It is very easy for people to think that because you're you're energetic and you're happy, you never yeah. have down days. Totally. Down times. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I, th- I think one of the toughest things is when I just really want to be quiet. And it's not because I'm necessarily sad or, like, upset about anything. I just want to chill. Like, I'm never quiet. I talk pretty much 16 hours a day at the gym. Like, you'll see me dancing. I'm talking to everyone. I'm so social. Then I go to work for eight hours at one job, another seven-hour shift at the next. So I never get to stop. And 
it's really tough because when I'm a little bit quiet, everyone's like, what's wrong? Are you okay? Like, what's going on with you? I'm like, yeah, I'm totally fine. And then at that point, I start to get overwhelmed. I'm like, ah, like, stop asking me what's yeah. wrong. Like, I'm fine. And then, and then I get like a little bit, oh, well, in my eyes, it's nasty. Like, you know, like yeah. I get kind of like short with people. I'm like, stop asking me, you know, and I don't yeah. mean to do that, but it gets, so then I find myself to get a little bit down and I shouldn't feel that way. I should just be able to say, oh, I'm just quiet. I just want a moment to yeah. enjoy myself. Peace for and a quiet, second. silence. Yeah. And so that happens, I would say, a lot. Like, I would say that happens probably every other day because mm-hmm. it's just natural when you're go, go, go yeah. all the time and you never get to stop. Um, but yeah, there's definitely sad days. And people yeah. say, like, they're like, oh, you have such a perfect life. Like, you're happy all the time. I'm like, oh, <laughs> no. Like, definitely not. I was like, there's so many stresses with relationships, family, you know, like just your own internal struggles that I have with myself and I'm get really down. Like, for example, like if I don't get out of bed when I was supposed to, like this morning I was beating myself up because I slept in an extra five minutes and I wasn't at the gym when I usually am. And, and those kind of things that you overthink every tiny little thing, it's like, relax. Like, it's okay. Yeah. You did nothing wrong. Like you were on your way to the gym at freaking five thirty in the morning. Like chill out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's funny how it's funny how some people think that your life it it, it just kind of like came down from <laughs> heaven yeah. and it was just so like put on a platter for you. Yeah. And and that because of that life you are happy. Yeah. It's totally. it's never like that. It's always the other way around. Yeah. You made it happen. Like you've made the choices and decisions along the way that have put you where you are at yeah. today. And it's I, how you choose to see things. Totally. And I think that is such it's like such a big part of it because for so long, you know, I was, oh, like I'm happy, I'm Chase, I'm happy, like that's how I have to be. And it was just I don't know, it was pretty fake. Like, it wasn't... I did not feel genuine at mm. all. And actually, I had an impromptu question. And, like, when I do pageant, you have to go up on stage and wear your big fancy dress. And they ask you an impromptu question, kind of like Miss America. And they said, what do you think is the most genuine thing about somebody? And I was like, oh, my God. And that kind of took me back a bit and was like, I'm not being genuine at all. Like, and then from that moment, I really started to try to, like be more myself every day after that because it was just trying to uphold like 150 percent is it's just not manageable and and I've noticed in myself too that I've sort of like pulled back a little bit from everything that I do like just maybe 10 percent of the energy so I can have maybe now 50 percent more energy at home with James because it's so not fair to him when I yeah. come home and I'm like, Ugh, I'm tired. I don't want to talk to you. I've had a bad day. Yeah. Like, don't talk to me right now. And he's just being so sweet. Being like, he's like, hey, babe, how was your I day? I look forward to this all day. <laughs> I, know, totally. I know that that's exactly what happens sometimes with me and Katie yeah. too. I get home and I'm like, I don't want to talk to anyone. Totally. And she's like, I miss you. I was just waiting for you to come home so that yeah. we could chat. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's, it's challenging to like, look at yourself and be able to do that because when I'm so used to like yeah 110% Jace on it all the time it's like okay I need to dial it back yeah it's almost like you need to give yourself the permission yeah or else it'll manifest in a worst way totally and it has like I've definitely had down points like there has been some rough days like dark scary days and um like I remember in high school and I think so many teenage girls go through this and there's a huge and teenage guys too like it goes both ways but and there's a huge reason why i love to do the ambassador program because i don't want young women to feel like oh because you're a little bit heavier have a bit meat on your bones that you can't do a pageant like i was the first full-figured girl to ever place in the ambassador program to my knowledge which is pretty cool um so i was about i would say about 230 pounds i was about a size 20 i would say roughly when i was crowned and it was tough because everyone's like oh you wear a size 20 dress you know and when you're a 17 year old girl you're like oh my god like that is so hurtful and and now i think like yeah i did wear a size 20 dress i was so hot like i looked awesome you know and i did like i felt so beautiful and i wore that crown on my head with so much pride and that was so cool to be able to do and a lot of people didn't believe in me because they're like well sorry you're fat 
you can't do pageant. And I'm like, well, sorry, I'm awesome, so I'm going to do it. Nice. <laughs> and so that, but that takes a lot to say. Yeah. And it's not, and it wasn't easy, and it's not easy for a lot of people to do that. So for me, like, I just, I pretty much wake up every single day. I look in the mirror, and I'm like, you're hot. Have a good day. Like, you know, and like, nice. even if I'm not feeling it, like, yeah. it's just that moment that you take with yourself. And you know what? You bring to mind this, this, um, something I read that said that our mind, if our life is um, like a vehicle, yeah. our mind is not the driver. Our mind is the steering wheel. We are That's the driver. Cool. Yeah. So we get to direct it. We choose which way it goes. That's cool. You know, yeah, I love that. Not our mind. Yeah. And that's that's incredible right there because so, so sometimes you may not be feeling this or that. You may not be feeling like it. Yeah. But you choose to be like, no, this is the way we're going. Totally. And and obviously that permeates every other aspect of your life. Yeah. Someone the other day actually I was talking about because I'm going to the education program. Um, so I just graduated with my degree. So on top of having two jobs and all these volunteer programs and everything, I was also going to school. So I have my double major in French and history now, and then I'm going to become a teacher this September, which is so exciting. Yeah. Oh, I'm like almost done, which is awesome. Um, but I was talking to someone who's in the education program, getting some feedback because I, I obviously can't do, I can't do everything that I'm doing right now and go to school. Right. There, there's no way. So I've had to... Um, really look at myself and my life and I made a whole list of everything that I do and what I can get rid of um, so that will probably be one of my jobs which is really tough because I love everything that yeah. I do and I'm so passionate about it yeah. so it's like how do you give something up that you love so much yeah. but you have to do it and that's kind of like with a bad relationship too like you might love that person so much but if they're not bringing goodness to your life then then you just, you got to make the cut and that's okay. Like, and so many people don't think that because they're like, oh, I love that person. Like, they're so good for me. And it's like, but they're not like, look, look at all these things yeah, that are like not what, positive. Yeah. Based on what? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So those are some things that I've had to like, you know, look at my life and okay, well now I'm going to school. Like what, what can I do? So I was talking to my friend Karen about all these things and she was like, my one thing that I always said to myself while I was in school and in tears and I had assignments you know, out the yin yang. She's like, you can quit tomorrow. And she's like, and I kept saying that to myself mm. every single day and I never quit. And she's like, you can quit tomorrow. Not right now. You can quit tomorrow. And I thought that nice. was really, really cool just yeah. because I don't know. I sometimes like when I'm in the middle of the workout and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so over this. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. I really don't. Like, yeah. I just want to actually lay here and sleep right now. <laughs> like, I just, just watch them sleep. work out. Yeah, I just want to just stand there with Brian being like, can I train the class actually? Yeah. Like, you work out. You yeah. be in my shoes right yeah. now. And it's tough, but then I'm like, nope. Like, you can quit in 25 minutes when the workout's done. Like, stop it. Stop being a pussy. Get it together. You can do this. So, and you just got to talk yourself into it. Through it. Yeah, yeah. like, you just have to... And I always am like, you got to talk yourself into it because if you talk yourself out of it, that, you know, you don't yeah. want to do that. Like, it's like, make sure that you're enjoying what you're doing. There's a reason why you're there and just keep going. Yeah. And you can quit tomorrow <laughs> if you have to. <laughs> Question. What does it mean for you? Like to you, what does it mean to be driven? Oh, that's cool. Um, I think taking care of myself. Like that is... Like, being driven in my own body, who I am, never straying away from, like, what I've created and done over these last, well, 25 years. But I would say mostly the last four years where I really feel like I've been involved and in just really taking care of myself. And then helping other people along the way. Like, kind of like tagging people like you're it while you're going. It's like, okay, like, look at all these awesome things I've done. Like, now I want you to try. And if you don't do it, that's okay. But... If I don't reach out and talk to you about it, then I feel like I haven't really spread all these little yeah. opportunities. And yeah. I feel like I always have little feelers out. And that's, yeah. like, what I'm supposed to do. I'm, like, I'm supposed to, like, touch people and be, like, yeah, you're it. Like, you got to go do this now. Yeah. And that's what really, like, drives and motivates me. And so, and then everything else kind of falls into place from yeah. there. It's, like... You know what's very interesting? I, I mean, this is maybe a, a weird way to look at things, but sooner or later... We're all going to die. Yeah. But knowing that you could have an impact on someone's lives 
and that person may grow up, have children, and be a happier mother, a better role model for those kids. Like you're literally, it's like it's like a, a positivity virus yeah. that you're like <laughs> totally, yeah. spreading yeah. over everyone. And I think like that's just so so important because like so many people come up to me and they're like, "Oh, you're so bubbly and happy, and that feels so good." And I'm like, "Good." Like I don't really want people to meet me being like. Oh, that Jace, like she was real nat like I wanna I wanna be happy yeah. and you know, maybe sometimes I'm not and that's totally yeah. okay, but I still feel like my personality is like excited. Yeah. That's that's what I feel like all the time. So even when there is like ah, bad days and I hate this and I don't wanna do it anymore, I'm like, no, like I do still like where I'm going. I still like the end goals. I still am passionate about what I'm doing. You can quit tomorrow. You can quit tomorrow. Yeah, and, and I never do. I've yeah. never, I'm, well, no, I've definitely given up on things. Totally, we all have, but yeah. there's... You choose what serves you, what doesn't serve you, and then you are strategic with those decisions. You're not totally. just like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right? totally. And I think that's the tough thing is so many people say, how do you do it? How do you fit it all in? Mm -hmm. How do you do it all? And I was like, it's just a matter of choices because we can totally do it. And... You know, it's it's tough because not everyone is the same. Like, they can't all fill their plate 100% full. And for me, like, that brings me happiness. Like, there's a little bit of when my plate is, like, 110% full. I'm like, yeah, like, I'm thriving off this right now. Like, every bit of this is, like, making me more jacked up and more motivated. And I want to do more things. And then some days it tips over and I'm like, okay, I don't want to do anything. But I don't know. That doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. Um, like, I, I think it's tough because people really beat themselves up. Or, like, I've had a lot of people compare themselves to me. I'm like, don't ever do that. Like, that's that's not going to make your life better. Like, yeah. But if you look to people as role models and say, these are all the things you're doing. That's so cool. I want to take on one more thing. Yeah. I'm going to fit that yeah. in. That's awesome. Like, I and I think that's one thing I try and teach, like, the candidates and the ambassadors in my program is you can't do it all. Like, not everyone is able to do this same lifestyle all the time yeah if you can cool roll with it and do it and make that your priority but just maybe take on one little thing or start working on your health and it'll all kind of fall into place from there yeah but you don't have to do it all at once and that's one thing too i'm so bad at i'm like it's a new day it's tuesday i'm gonna take on all of these things and get a million things done and da 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 no it never happens i never actually like check off everything on my list yeah. so if i check off the first three things on my list i'm yeah. pretty happy so you know what i really like and i think this is important for everybody to to um digest out of this mm -hmm. you're succeeding because you expect a lot from yourself yes you give yourself the room, the kindness, and the, the, the compassion, the self-compassion to be okay if you don't. Yeah. If you don't hit your targets every single day, that's okay. Yeah. You'll try again tomorrow. Totally. And and that's the thing. Like, there's... You're, I never look at it as, as failure. It's just like, oh, a new opportunity for the next day. And I think that's what people will beat themselves. They're like, oh, I failed. I didn't get that done. And it's like, yeah. no. Just put it on the list for the next day. <clears throat> yeah. You didn't get out of the gym? That's that's going to be life, right? Like, yeah. you're never... I, I mean, at least in my experience, I have never gotten to the end of one day where I'm like, Boom. that's it. Yeah. Like, I am caught up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When yeah. when can you catch never. up? <laughs> never. Never. Yeah. yeah. Yet, if we, if we take a second and we look back at the last few years of our lives yeah. and where they've brought us, you're like, oh, okay, shit. I'm doing something right. Yeah. You know, and you're obviously enjoying the day to day as well. Um, so that that's, totally. that's obvious. And that's the thing, I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. And you know, sometimes yeah, it's a little too full, and sometimes it's a little tough. But I still, at the end of the day, love what I'm doing, and I feel so rewarded all yeah. the time. So I don't want to give up on that. Yeah. Like those aren't things that I'm willing to give up to be less busy. But sometimes, like I was saying, how I make, like, my little daily goals or weekly goals. Like, sometimes my daily goal is to watch a show on Netflix. Like, yeah. that legit is, like, yeah. you need to sit down, and it's so hard for me to relax. So, it's, like, or do, like, yoga. And not that yeah. I know how to do yoga, but I'll, like, do little stretches on yeah. the mat or something. Or just anything to kind of give myself, like, 15 minutes of Jace time. Yeah. If I get that every day, 
it's usually a pretty solid, like, I can keep going. Yeah. So, that's good. Final question. What message would you give your driven family? Oh, that's tough. I think the number one thing is always set the bar high for yourself and nobody else. And just always try and complete your individual goals. And set goals for yourself, push yourself, and find that internally. And if you need to, like, branch out to people, that's great. But just make sure you're doing you. And, like, you first, always. Like, that's number one. And I think so many people say, well, and like, in the Driven Family, like, oh, you know, like, these are, you know, my top people in my life. Or we've had that kind of conversation on Facebook before. Like, name your top three people. And it's like, always make sure you're that number one person. Like, you only have one you, one body, yeah. one mind. Like, you never take get to do this over again. Yeah. So it's like, take care of that and enjoy yourself and let everything else just fall into place from there. Because it will. It always does. <laughs> it <Nice>. always does. <laughs> awesome, Jace. Thank Yay! you so much. Wow. You. You're a natural. Oh, thanks. 